Visit thehonestcarpenter.com and get your home-related questions answered by a trade expert. Hey everybody, I'm Ethan James with thehonestcarpenter.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to repair rotted brick mold like you see on the outside of this door. So as a little extra info, brick mold is this particular type of casing that you see on a lot of exterior doors and windows. Um, it hides the gap between the door jam and the wall or the rough opening and gives something siding to bump up against. Uh, it's often made of porous pine that rots down here at the bottom. You see this over and over again. So the repair I frequently do to save people some money is I just cut off the bottom maybe 12 or 16 inches and replace that with PVC that can't rot. Now on this particular door you also see something else that happens a lot. Uh, jam rot. I made another video about this. I'm not going to cover it in this one, but I will link that video in my end screen. So be sure to check it out. I do a similar repair for the jams. And in this case, I'm going to do both, but I'm only going to show the brick mold. And uh, so I will set up the cut by creating a good straight line here. And then I'll cut the lower portion off and that'll make room for the repair. So I've gone ahead and marked my cut here. As you can see, in this case, I did it 16 inches up because I always do this repair on both brick molds. You're already showing a little sign of rot here. Even if I wasn't yet, I would probably still go ahead and do this side because eventually it will rot, especially when you have the deck this close to it. This water can bounce up, it can bounce up off the threshold. Inevitably, this brick mold is going to give away. And this second one had some damage that the dog was chewing on it. And I thought, might as well go ahead and cut that out as well. So I set this one at 16. And I always like to do them parallel to each other just because it winds up looking better. So to get those straight lines, I just pull up 16 inches with my measuring tape. And then I use a combination square set against the inner edge of the brick mold. And I trace, scribe a line across the top with my pencil. And I also do this little inner cheek as well. So that's going to help me guide my cut in when I'm using the oscillating multi-tool, which I will show next. So this is the multi-oscillating tool that I'm going to use to make this plunge cut into the brick mold. Uh, if you watch my videos, you're going to see this thing time and time again. I use it for any instance where I need to make a plunge cut directly into a piece of trim or something like that. I wrote a whole article on this. I'll link it down in the description. Check it out. Like This is the most useful tool you can have for home repair. So I'm going to redirect camera here a little bit and let you see how this works. that's it that's through the basically whole inch inch and a quarter depth of the brick mold and I know it went through because I kind of feel it punch through the back but pretty much all I do is I just keep the thing moving side to side in little strokes I don't want to go too far over and chip the jam too much I don't want to come too far over and chip the vinyl siding either so just work it back and forth scribe a line first with the tool and then begin to work it in make sure you're using a sharp blade or it gets very ineffective fast if the blade's sharp it'll just go through like butter basically uh, so yeah, I will start to pry this piece out and then we'll get a new one cut. A couple tips for removing the notch that you just made. Uh, I always start by getting a good sharp utility knife and cutting the caulk at the inner edge and the outer edge. Um, and then I begin to use my hammer to tap in my five in one with the bevel towards the door and begin prying it out. If you can really visibly see a nail, that's there's not going to be many of them this low down in the door, just one or two. Use something like a cat's paw or a five in one to actually pry out that individual nail, and the piece is probably just going to want to come away with a little more work. But I'll have this off in about 10 seconds. There's the piece removed. You can see a little tongue of wood that I didn't cut back there. That broke off pretty easily. It'd probably be better to clean it up with the saw before I pulled this thing out, but it didn't make a big difference. You can see this like massive three and a half inch trim nail that I pried out. And there was like one more at the bottom somewhere right there. I'll pull that out, but now we have a good surface to come in here and install a new piece of brick mold. 
At this point, I should mention that I was a little disconcerted with a couple of the things I found when we tore off the brick mold, particularly that the house wrap did not fully cover the exposed framing in the rough opening here as it normally would. But I also didn't find much rot in that area, and given that an extensive repair would have involved tearing off the vinyl siding and possibly parts of the deck, uh, the homeowner and I both decided that it wasn't worth doing, if it, especially if it wasn't showing visible signs of rot yet. So I was okay with uh, adding some seal in various sensitive places and closing it back up as is and the homeowner could just keep an eye on it and keep an eye on the new jam pieces down the line for further signs of rot. One other thing I'd like to point out it's actually a little easier to show on the jam cut I just made. Um, when I'm doing these plunge cuts with the oscillating multi-tool notice that I didn't actually dig in square. I go in at a slight upward angle, just a little bit, a couple degrees or something. And what that does is when I cut my replacement piece, that ensures that the front face will be able to get as tight as possible to the face above it. I don't care if there's a little gap at the back because I'm gonna be attaching into the rough opening through this face. I just wanna make sure that these two faces come together, pinched together real tightly. And you can do that more easily if you cut at this slight upward angle because it's gonna leave the back and a little bit higher up than the front so the piece will be able to scoot in there real easily and it won't get held down by something poking down from the back here so that's just something i wanted to point out so here i've got the new jam pieces spliced into place uh i've got brad nails and adhesive holding them in place they're going to set up better over tonight but this is this is uh clear the way for me to go ahead and cut and replace the brick mold pieces so all you do at this point is pull a measurement from the deck to the underside of the piece above, usually at the face of the piece. And um, that's, your, that's your cut line. If you're doing this on a window, you have to remember to put something like a 15 degree angle or miter on the bottom of your replacement piece, but that's not gonna be the situation here because it's a door. Um, this piece over here might actually fall into this little hole in here. I don't mind because I'm going to fill these holes with silicone. That's going to be part of another repair I'm doing underneath the house. It's sort of the best thing we can do on short notice without tearing up the deck, without tearing up the th threshold in the kitchen floor, keep water from, from getting in there where it's caused, caused a problem underneath the house on the subfloor. But at this point, you can just go ahead and use your tape measure to pull measurements for your replacement pieces. And these will be square on the top and square on the bottom. Here's the PVC replacement brick mold we're going to use. Uh, this stuff is just really light molded PVC. Um, my replacement piece is going to be about 20 inches. Again, if you have to put a miter on the underside, turn it up on edge. Adjust your miter to like 5 degrees or something, 15 for windows. <clears throat> and cut that miter first and then measure up from the long point. But in this case, we're cutting square, so I'm just going to measure up 20, make a mark, do a square cut. And just remember that brick mold has this routed detail out on the outside in this case molded detail and you need to make sure that that detail is always to the left or right of the door frame based on which side of the door you're replacing so this uh this molding is directional just keep that in mind when you're cutting it especially if you're having to put any kind of angle on it so this looks messy but all this is going to get hidden you got silicone down below i'm going to add more from the underside of the house what i like to do is take the piece and bed it into caulk uh, on the jam, on the siding edge, and on the underside of the uh, brick mold above, and also into spots in the rough opening behind. Uh, and what you wind up with when you put it in there is this piece, which gets kind of pushed back, and caulk is fairly adhesive even. So now I'm gonna, only gonna add a few brad nails to this thing to keep it in place, and then I'm gonna caulk the seams around once it's in place to hide the attachment points. And uh, the thing's gonna look really well bedded and it's gonna have some extra adhesion holding it in. So I'm just gonna do that for the same one over here, then caulk the perimeters and uh, it'll just about be done until it gets a chance to dry up. Here's the wrap up to the brick mold repair. I got my new pieces spliced in. I shot them in with two inch brad nails from my brad nailer. I don't put that many in. Uh, just two back into the rough opening framing, high and low, and then two more into the jam. That really locks it in place. Like I said, I went ahead and caulked the full perimeter. I'll go ahead and caulk my nail heads as well. And uh, after the caulk has time to dry up, this will be ready for paint. And paint is really going to hide the splices on that repair. That's going to wind up looking good. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please hit like and subscribe below. Thank you.
We're now offering live video consultations and phone consultations to homeowners nationwide. To get your most important home-related questions answered by a trade expert, just visit thehonestcarpenter.com.